Let me start by thanking the organizers, and in particular, Professor T.P. Sinha for inviting me to this conference. I guess uh, there's a complete change in this thing because it's uh, something completely different from what was spoken about in the last two talks. Uh, what I want to talk about is some uh, work that we've done recently on spin mode switching in the quantum Hall effect. This is work done in collaboration with Udit Khanna, who is a PhD student of mine who has just finished and uh, will be joining his postdoc soon. Ganpati Murthy, who is a faculty from uh, University of Kentucky, and Yuval Gem from Weizmann Institute. And this is work which has just been completed and will appear uh, in a couple of days in the PRN. So I'll start with giving a brief introduction to the integer quantum Hall effect and kind of advertise it as the first topological phase. And then I'll discuss something which is called the bulk edge correspondence in these models. Then I'll go on to what uh, is the focus of my work, which is a problem of edge reconstruction in the presence of Coulomb interactions in the quantum Hall system. And I'll talk about our work on edge mode spin switching and summarize with what you plan to do. Uh, as all of you know, the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Thaulis, Holden, and Kostelitz, and their, it was for theoretical discoveries of topological phase transition and topological phases of matter. But here I want to emphasize that uh, although it's the first to mention, the Nobel Prize to mention actually topological phases, it's not really the first Nobel Prize for topological phases. The first was actually given in 1982 to von Klitzing for the discovery of quantized Hall effect. And that, in fact, is the first topological phase. And the second was given in 1998 to Laughlin, Stormer, and Sui for discovery of a new form of quantum fluid with fractionally charged excitations, which was another, again, a quantum, uh, topological phase. And one may expect more Nobel Prizes for other topological phases in the future. So as I wanted to emphasize, topological phases first were discovered 30 years ago in the integer quantum Hall effect. And uh, this is a phenomenon which occurs in two-dimensional electron systems at low temperatures and in the presence of strong magnetic fields. So initially, this was seen in what are called the two-dimensional electron gases which was formed in a la layer of aluminum gallium arsenide between gallium arsenide material. And in recent times, quantum Hall effect has been seen in, the, in graphene systems as well. <coughs> so uh, the main point about the quantum Hall uh, uh, effect is that it's a completely independent of details of the sample, such as size, shape, impurities, temperature, etc. And you get completely flat plateaus at integer values of uh, what is called the unit of quantization now, which is uh, unit of resistance, which is now called the one clit thing. H by E squared is 25.8 ohms. So the conductance gets quantized in units of E squared by over H. And uh, this, in fact, just the integer quantum Hall effect by itself could be explained in terms of single particle quantum mechanics of non-interacting uh, electrons in a land magnetic field. And this is just the Landau level problem, which many of you would have done in the quantum mechanics courses. Landau level energies are given by E n is n plus half h cross omega. And omega is E b by m, the cyclotron frequency, or the gap. It's the cyclotron gap. And uh, the Landau level energies are uh, highly degenerate. The density of independent states in each Landau level is given by the number of flux quanta, which is Ev by Hc. And in terms of the density of electrons, the filling factor of each Landau level is given by nu, which is n over Ev by Hc. And the idea of the integer quantum Hall effect is that whenever nu is an integer, an integer number of Landau levels are filled, and that's what it gives you stability to the system. So when the Fermi level is in the cyclotron energy gap between the two energies, and provided some amount of disorder exists so that there are states in the gap, and if the disorder should not be large enough to close the gap, that is when you get <coughs> quantum Hall effect. 
another simple way, a semi-classical way of understanding the quantum Hall effect is to see that if I think of a two-dimensional system and a magnetic field applied to it, then the uh, electron ha goes in cyclotron orbits, but at the edges of the sample, the cyclotron orbits are cut off. So, that essentially means that at the edges of the sample, the electrons can only move in one direction. In one edge, they will move in one direction and the other edge, that they move in the other direction. So, in a strip geometry, a semi-classical picture is enough to explain why electrons in the bulk of the sample are localized, but electrons at the edges of the sample are delocalized and are free to move. They have what are called skipping orbits at the edges. And the, what is called now the bulk edge correspondence is just this, that at the bulk spectrum consists of these degenerate Landau levels, but at the edges of the sample, the uh, Landau levels bend due to the confining potential and one gets essentially one edge state per Landau level. So, you, if you have a filling, frac, uh, filling of three, three Landau levels are filled you will have three edge states at each of the edges, which will are the current carrying states. And at both the edges, the, uh, both at the left and right moving edges, they are chiral. They move only in one direction, either to the left or to the right. And this is, again, if you p now put a voltage drop across it, you can have current flowing only in one direction and you can get the conduct. And uh, this also explains why the quantum Hall effect is so stable, because, because of the spatial separation of the right movers and the left movers, even if there is some kind of a disorder over here, it cannot backscatter, because the right move, uh, this side, uh, the left movers are very far away from the right movers. And so, the only thing that can happen in the presence of disorder is that it goes around it and it still get the same current. So, this is one way of hand waving a way of explaining why you get very uh, these quantized currents and small amounts of disorder do not change this current. It explains the robustness and accuracy of the quantum <coughs> Hall effect and why it is not affected by impurities and disorder. And now one has this topological explanation of the <coughs> quantization, which came, uh, which is. Uh, uh, we now understand that the Hall current is related to a topological invariant, which is the churn number. Essentially, the wave functions get knotted by the magnetic field and form a new phase, which can only change if there is something drastic happening, such as there are edge states. Otherwise, the integer quantum Hall state is separated by a topological quantum number for a one ordinary insulator. And I just mentioned this to say that the recognition that churn numbers can exist in bands even without the need of magnetic field is what has led to all this current excitement about topological insulators, where the high spin orbit coupling plays the role of the uh, magnetic field. So, now let me come to what happens when you now have Coulomb interactions in the problem. And probably many of you are familiar with the idea that for strong electron electron interactions, one gets the fractional quantum Hall effect. For when nu is, uh, where you get the quantum Hall even for nu is equal to fraction, but that is not the focus of this talk. What I want to focus on is the fact that the electron electron interactions are important even in the integer quantum Hall effect. And it is needed to define the ordering of the Landau levels in the prints of spin because there is extremely small negligible Zeeman splitting. And so, if once you have spin, unless you have Coulomb interactions, I, even a nu is equal to one state is not stable. So, and these electron electron interactions causes edge reconstruction. So, which is what I will explain now. Essentially, the point is that uh, very naively splitting between the angular levels. Uh, if I just take g is equal to 2, you can think that the spin up and the spin down Landau levels will have be the, uh, the, the cyclotron energy is the same as this energy and you would think it is equivalent. But typically what happens is that because the g is much less than 2 and band mass is much less than m, the Zeeman energy is much smaller than not only the cyclotron energy, it is also much smaller than the Coulomb energy. It is the smallest energy in the picture and you can neglect it. 
And because of that, what happens is that it is in the absence of Coulomb interactions, the upspin and the downspin are actually degenerate. So even the nu is equal to 1 is only a half filled level. And it would uh, not be a quantum Hall effect if it would not show quantum Hall effect unless there are Coulomb interactions in the picture. So, uh, essentially at the plateau at nu is equal to 1 is a quantum Hall ferromagnet. It is although naively when we study it we just think of it as a uh, we ignore the interactions. Really speaking the real reason that you get a plateau at nu is equal to 1 is because there is uh, Coulomb interactions. Otherwise you would get a plateau only at nu is equal to 2 when both the spin up and the spin down are filled. The gap between these two is actually being caused because of Coulomb energy and it is like the what is called the, the effect which says all the spin ups have to be filled first. Hund's rule, yeah the Hund's rule, this is a, this thing of the Hund's rule. And so for higher fillings also the order of the filling of the Landau levels is determined by this in electron electron interactions. For instance if you look at it at nu is equal to 3 there at a, a particular coulomb ener energy of E c by omega this is the cyclotron frequency and the coulomb energy uh, of 2.5 there is a bulk first order transition from 0 up uh, the 0 up 0 down and 1 up are the lowest Landau level up lowest Landau level down and the next Landau level up. Instead of that it goes to a phase where all of them are ferromagnetic 0 up, 1 up, 2 up. So, this ordering is actually something which is being determined by the Coulomb energy. And uh, so, this <coughs> the same thing that is happening in the bulk I can also explain in terms of the edges there is a I have already talked about what uh, that, that there is a bulk edge correspondence, but it is only certain minimal properties of the edge such as the Hall conductance that are determined by the bulk and other properties can be detail, uh, affected by details such as smoothness of the edge potential and electron electron interactions. And this is something which is called the edge reconstruction. So, depending on the confining potential that one uses to define the two dimensional electron gas. Uh, we can have either what I would call smooth edges or sharp edges depending on the uh, size of this w. If w is very small then you have a sharp edge, if w is very large you have a smooth edge. And we use a background density which falls from its maximum to a minimum in this edge in this length, length scale w. And what has already been seen earlier is that you can get changes in the edges due to changes in the confining potential. For nu is equal to 1 what was seen is that if you soften the if you make the shell smoother and smoother then at some point it becomes energetically more favorable for some of the electrons to go far away. I mean within a Hartree fog this is the picture more exactly when you calculate this is the kind of picture that you get. Instead of having a smooth edge smooth thing at the edge the electrons are uh, do something like this. It tries to mimic the background density and minimize electrostatic energy, but on the other hand because of the Fock term if you have only the uh, uh, Hartree term then it will actually try to be flat, but if you also have the Fock term then this is the way it chooses to minimize the energy. A similar thing is done for nu is equal to 2, what you find is that as you make the edge smoother the two up edge and the down edge try to move away from each other to make to kind of balance what is there in the background density. So, then you find that actually you get a sizable separation between the edge states of the opposite spin. Again the main aim is to minimize the electrostatic energy. So, the main point I want to emphasize this, uh, this is the earlier work is that in both these cases depending on whether the potential at the edge is smooth or abrupt the number and position of the quantum Hall edge states can be changed and this is something which is called charge reconstruction at the edge because of and essentially is due to the fact that the state lowers its energy at the edge 
by reconstructing the Landau levels so as to spread out the charge density. Now, but both of these are examples of charge reconstruction and involve re reorganization of the charge density. The question we asked is that if there are multiple edge modes with the same spin, is there an exchange driven ex uh, inter uh, uh, rearrangement possible? Because there is an exchange interaction between the uh, up spins and the down spins and so on, whether that would cause any kind of rearrangement of the uh, this thing. The simplest case here is to have nu is equal to 3, because that will have at least 2 modes with the same spin. So, we have uh, and so the idea is that if the edge is very sharp, these through three modes will be very close to each other. As you make the edge smooth, these three modes will move away from each other. And at some point, what happens is that they are far enough away, so that they gain by and having two like spins close to one another. And uh, even making up for the loss in changing the flipping the spin. So, even though the bulk does not change, even in a regime where the bulk remains 0 up, 0 down, 1 up, what we find is that the edge modes can change. So, this is uh, this is what I will show in some detail. So, the basic setup is just a bulk Hamiltonian, which I would not go through in detail. We have a Coulomb repulsion term and we have this edge potential term. And what we find is that okay? There in the, let me. This is the pic main picture which I need to explain in some detail. So this entire white region is something I will call the bulk, two bulk ground states. The white region is one bulk ground state, and the blue region is another bulk ground state. I said that uh, at some Coulomb. Uh, okay. The order of levels in the white space is zero up, zero down, and one up order of Landau levels in the blue phase is 0 up, 1 up, 2 up and there is a phase transition between these two. Okay. That, that has been already seen, even experimentally it has been seen. Now, what we are looking at is th at this phase where the order of the bulk levels is 0 up, 0 down and 1 up and we are trying, what we find is that there are three possible edge phases. The edge phases do not just go up the way I drew over here. This is the naive way, right? If these 0 up, 0 down, and 1 up, you would expect the edges to be of the form 0 up, 1 up, 0 down, and 1 up. What we find is that the spins over here mix because of the <coughs> Coulomb energy. So, these are the three phases that we are calling phase A, phase B, and phase C. Close to the edge translational invariance is broken and different values of k will make and different lambda levels will make. So, we actually need to find the states by re, uh, an iteration procedure. And what we find is the follow that for small values of lo, low Coulomb energy and small omega so that is for sharp edges it remains as it was right uh, uh, that uh, you still get the outer and once you allow for spin mixing and Landau level mixing, you can no longer even label them by up, down and so on. So, we will actually be calling them inner, middle and outer, because they, they start mixing. For slow, low enough values of these, you still have the outermost as 0 up, middle as 0 down and inner as 1 up. And the spin character remains up, down, up which is the same as the bulk order and there is no spin switching. But now, what we are going to do is change this uh, smoothness of the potential. And as the softness of the edge potential increases, we will go either to phase B or to phase C depending on the value of the Coulomb potential. So, what we find is that there is a certain regime of the Coulomb potential, where you find that the spin of the outer and middle modes exchange you find that the, if this is uh, in terms of the energy diagram, we find that there is an avoided crossing over here and the spins actually change exchange. So, after switching in phase B, the spin ordering is given by down, up, up. 
So, up down up goes to down up up. And uh, in there is another regime where we where it is the these two which exchange up down up goes to up up down. This is a another uh, regime of the this thing. So, these are the what I plotted in the phase diagram. Depending on what is my Coulomb uh, interaction, I will go from phase A to phase B or phase A to phase C. and uh, the spin character at the chemical potential switches abruptly. So, this is from phase A to phase B, phase C and this is the from phase A to phase B. An important point to note is that actually the charge density does not vary at all. Phase A and phase B both have the same charge densities. It is only the spin of which is switching in this. this in all the earlier reconstructions, there was charge reconstruction. It was the charge which was getting changed. And in this kind of model at nu is equal to 3, you need to go to much softer, much more smooth uh, potentials before you will see charge reconstruction. So, essentially spin reconstruction takes place before charge reconstruction. So, so as I said, charge reconstruction require much larger values of this and this occurs before with the construction. And we have checked the robustness of this effect, because uh, it is robust to changes in the form and range of Coulomb interaction, number of Landau levels uh, which are allowed to mix. Even for the nu is equal to 3, we allowed up to nu is equal to 6 Landau levels to mix into the system. It which allowed system size changes and changes in the value of Zeeman energy. Zeeman energy we can take as close to 0 as possible. And, uh, but small variation that do not make any difference. We also checked it using a variational ansatz, which I will not go through in detail. And so, now let me give uh, some experimental uh, uh, scenarios of where one might look for these kinds of spin switching. So, uh, uh, The way, way one might try to look for them is that uh, one can make what are called quantum point contacts. And uh, you can apply gate voltages to uh, form constrictions in this quantum hall uh, system. And uh, one can uh, tune it to a conductance of 2 E squared by H. That is, you can allow two of them to go through and one of them to be backscattered. So, these are all kind of uh, things that people can do in the lab. Uh, and so, the QPC region, what is this quantum point contact region has nu is equal to 2. And in the kind of uh, uh, Coulomb energies that we are going to be, we are looking at, the QPC region has to have bulk spin polarization. Because the bulk spin is also determined by, as I said, whether it is a polarized state or a non-polarized state depends on the Coulomb energy. So, and we put the source here on top left and the drain at the on top right. So, we are looking at the source and then we are looking at the current here. And what one sees is if all of them, if there is no spin mode switching, then uh, the incoming and the outgoing currents are unpolarized, because one of them is spin up, it is up, down, up and it is the same at this end, which is up, down, up. So, you would still have it to be unpolarized at both the ends. On the other hand, if I make on one end smoothen the potentials, so that it goes to phase C, then you will have up, up, down here. So, you would actually by as a by varying the uh, smoothness of the potential on both the sides you can actually see whether you can get this spin switching or not. So, the essentially we are saying that when edges to the right of the quantum point contact are in phase B, the current changes from spin polarized to spin, spin unpolarized to spin polarized, right. So, it depending on the smoothness of the this thing, uh, because what is being changed from here to here is the smoothness of the potential. 
phase C I should have written here, sorry, this is phase C, which is what I have written over here. There is another kind of uh, experimental scenario that you can envisage. One can think of what happens if you have this qu double quantum uh, point two, two QPCs in series and then you allow it to be in the nu is equal to 1 regime. You can tune it to be in the nu is equal to 1 regime. In this case, what you will have see is that if in the interior, this is in phase A, both of these are in phase A, then there can be no scattering between any of these uh, modes which are close to one another because uh, they have opposite spins. Because uh, you cannot have a tunneling like spin, I mean you need tunneling only between the like spin modes. Okay. <coughs> but on the other hand, if this is phase C, is uh, smooth in the middle, then uh, the two spin modes are, th there can be uh, backscattering over here, scattering between these two modes. And essentially what we want to say is that it will undermine the quality of the nu is equal to 1 plateau. Nu is equal to 1 plateau will be very nicely seen here. It will be slightly more undermined in this case. And this is again something. And one can have very other similar signatures depending on the smoothness of the various cases. For instance, you can have left right asymmetry. Here if the phase is, uh, if the source is at the top left, you can have, cannot have disorder uh, uh, induced tunneling. So, no backscattering or no degradation. On the other hand, if the source is at this point, then there is possibility of degradation and these are all kinds of things that you can try to look for. So, to summarize what I want to essentially, I will just summarize what I have said in this, this thing. The integer quantum Hall states are topological states which are characterized by bulk topological numbers which also determine the number and chirality of the edge states. But the actual structure of the edge states is uh, uh, subject to details and can be observed in appropriately designed devices. We focused on a regime where as the confining potential is made shallower, the spin of the edge mode switch bringing like spins close to one another due to exchange interaction. But I should emphasize that this is a new kind of uh, phenomenon that we are proposing. Charge reconstruction has been talked about before, but we are suggesting here that you can have spin reconstruction due to Coulomb interaction. And the crucial requirements to see the switching transition you need a partially polarized bulk state, which is why we took nu is equal to 3. We need moderate to strong electron electron interaction strength, and one needs smooth edges. All of these are something which are experimentally possible in Weizmann Institute, for instance. It is important to stress that no charge reorganization takes place. So, it is in a different class from earlier reconstruction, and we have suggested some experimental scenarios to look for these spin switching. And further work, although bulk nu, nu is equal to 3 does not have spin textures, edge spin textures could arise. This should, ha if we can do quantum Hall effect in graphene, similar kind of uh, phenomenon should occur there as well. It should generalize to the composite fermion analog of the nu is equal to 3 state. And finally, this is a gen, since as a, as a more general thing, though we have done it for the particular case of nu is equal to 3, one can think about what about edge reconstruction in other topological phases once you include Coulomb interaction.